Hello City Skylines fans, I'm Soxway Up and welcome back to Chillhorn Season 2. Kind of a beginner's guide to City Skylines where we're attempting to unlock all the milestones and actually finish a city in vanilla City Skylines. Today we're going to take a little step back and do a little more explaining than we did in the last episode. We did a lot of industry or we started building our industry area. And I didn't do the best job of explaining some of the things about it. So let's go ahead and open up this industry tab here for our farming industry. Some of the things that we should be looking at, eventually we want, actually let's close it up. You can see we have two stars above the name. We want this to be a five star industry. And the way to do that is to satisfy both of these um, requirements for the upgrade. You can see we have to produce a certain amount of resources to upgrade, which was 1500. We're way above that. Workers until next level is 350. We have the ability to have 535 workers right now. We only have 239, so we're like 100 and was that 110, 112 away from upgrading that. As we look at our demands overall in the city, very high uh, demand for residential zoning. That's probably why those jobs aren't filled. Let's also take a look at our people tab here population we can see we have 12 2700 people excuse me 1400 of them are employed with 2300 jobs available two percent unemployment so there's more jobs available than people to do the work and that is some of the things that we saw last episode at the very beginning where we have this little worker icon above the buildings not enough workers you can see they have two out of eight they also want well educated which Excuse me again. Well educated is going to come from high school. So if we jump into our education information tab here, we can see we have plenty of capacity. It is just a matter of getting the students through the school. 37% of the population is already well educated. Eventually we'll unlock uh, universities and we'll be able to get to that highly educated uh, category as well which and then we'll turn around and most likely start building skyscrapers and more office complexes and transition from traditional dirty farming coal industry into having the industry quote unquote jobs come from office buildings instead of coal and power plants and things like that. So it's kind of the natural progression of a city where the city starts out. Let's make this a little better to look at where the city starts out and you, you know, you have the resources in the ground and you start building your environments or your your community around what is in that area of the world. And then as the city progresses, the education gets better and the city grows and then it turns into maybe a high tech city. And that's probably what we're going to do with this one as we go through the entire transition of a city from brand new. Maybe we have a nice area that is for farming and that's why the city started. And then it started growing and people had different wants and desires and education came into the town. And that's where we're going to go with this journey. So that being said, that was a little high overview of some of the things that we've missed. Um, again, this, this series isn't going to be the prettiest city. I'm trying my best to design a nice city in vanilla. A lot of the reasons for doing this series was a little selfish of my own. I wanted to do it. I wanted to play vanilla again, and I thought I would show the journey along the way and try to make it educational. But that's enough of a rant and catch up. Let's jump right in. Today, we're going to look at a little bit of public transportation. But first, we're going to have to expand some of the residential areas to get those needs balanced out. Let's jump right into it. So at this point, we're still running the game at times three, and that's because the money is starting to really come into play here. You can see the profit from our farming industry is fluctuating. So right now it's 973. We can see that jump up. It's going to come back and forth from low to high. But and, and over, all in all, that is causing the weekly income of the city to do the same. As long as it doesn't dip to the negative, we're fine. And at this point, we're actually jumping all the way up to 6,000 a week at some point. And that's where you see income is starting to not, or money is starting not to be an issue. We got taxes all taken care of. I wanted to double check that. But here, if you remember the first episode, we talked about residential area being all around here. Long term, this coastline will probably want to upgrade to be like a downtown-ish, high density area. 
but we can't do that yet because we don't have those unlocked. So we're going to keep expanding both directions for now. And let's make sure they stay straight. Let's go about right there. And then let's grab here the two lane road. And we're gonna start kind of somewhat mimicking the coastline. This will click to the other road. There we go. Let's go right about there. This tool will probably be better for this part of the build. Kind of hug this coastline and make a nice little winding road that really starts killing the grid. And I feel like a broken record when I make these videos, um, but this is really where the grid disappears in the cities that I build, is we start kind of mimicking the coastline and have a, a road that, that hangs around the coast, or if it's a mountain, we can do that as well. But we're gonna then start connecting these out and build out more of the residential. So this will probably be one of the last episodes that we show every little bit of road building and we'll start jumping ahead um, and just get to the focus of the video. Like today we talked about transportation. So after we get this neighborhood established, we will then jump into building our first uh, bus lines and make sure we're getting the workers to their jobs easily and then people wanting to commute to commercial areas can do that as well. And that'll be some of the focus later on in the episode. But let's get some of these roads finished up. One of the things I forgot to mention while we're kind of building some roads and I have some time to just fill some dead air here. I'm recording a lot of this in one go. Uh, so we're recording number video number four right now. And the first video has not been released yet. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm going out of town soon. I wanted to get a lot of good content going on the channel and keep it moving while we do that. And I'm excited. I'm excited to get a lot of these going and then see some comments and see if we can, you know, get the get the channel to grow a little bit uh, towards the end of this year as we are rapidly approaching the 800 subscriber mark, which I'm super excited about. So yeah, getting to 800 is a huge goal of mine for the end of the year, and we're, we're probably going to hit that well before the year ends, which is extremely exciting. So let's keep on with the zoning here. Do some more residential there. Let's back out. So we did have this line here that was supposed to be commercial. I think that's where we're going to stop this little commercial section. We have a lot of it. We'll see how that demand translates. But while we're in here before houses grow, let's find a few parks to just fill some of these areas to keep the people happy. And this is another thing that we wanted to explain a little bit better as we go. We did not do a very good job of that in the last few episodes. Let's put this one. Ah, that kills a lot of space. Let's grab one more park. That should be good. Okay, let's look at one of these buildings. And we see that this one is a level three. It has three households. These new ones coming in are level one and have three households. So there's not much of a difference there with the total people. But if we look at our income here and we go to the residential tab, we can see a lot more income comes from level three houses. And as we keep increasing that and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm gonna clear my throat and take a break. Okay, and after I took my break here, I found a house that I wanted to take a look at here. This one is unhappy at this point, and it only is one household. When this one levels up, it'll most likely have more households, and that's where we're getting more people per building. And that's something that's in Vanilla City Skylines. If anybody's watched some of my videos in the past, you know that I like to play with realistic population, which makes it one household per low density building. And then the, uh oh, look what we have here. Then the, uh, to finish my thought, then the high density buildings have more people in them than in Vanilla City Skylines. Something to look into if you get to the point where you're, you're done with vanilla and you want to start playing modded. There's a ton of videos out there for that. Let's, um, why did this happen? I guess the reason this probably happened is we have a lot of jobs over here and the game's gonna favor the industry DLC over these. And this is an area where I didn't necessarily really care about that being that generic industry. I wanted to make sure those jobs were still filled while we did that. So let's dezone all of that and that should take care of that issue. What do we have here? These ones just have not gone away yet. Um, let's bulldoze that. But we're gonna have an electricity issue because of that, so let's connect those up. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this neighborhood completely fill in. We're going to then jump to the mass transportation. So while we're letting the game run and that neighborhood fill out, we did hit level three on our farming industry. And you can see here it opens the lemonade factory, the milking parlor, the medium crops, and the medium fruit greenhouses. So potentially at this point, you could either grow more buildings or you could replace these small ones with the medium ones. We're not gonna do anything with that in this episode. We're gonna let this keep going. We still have enough capacity here to hit level four. I think what we're gonna do is let that run in the background, see how close it gets. That might be something that I do off camera in between episodes and then do just an update later on. So let's get into the transportation part of the video. You can see this neighborhood's starting to come in pretty nice. Our demand is starting to come back up and creep back up on us, and so is the commercial demand, which I'm okay with that right now. I think that's a good time to kind of just let our income, you know, take over. Let's drop it down to times one for now. We got good enough income. I like the way the city looks when we play it in type one or times one. So let's do that. So we have this area close to the main entrance to the city and close to this intersection that is not has not been zoned but with anything, and nothing's there. I did save that for the bus depot. So we're gonna put the bus depot right here. So you can see here's this building. And what this gives us is the ability to make bus routes. So let's go back into the transportation tab. We're working on buses at first. There's other things like trolley buses. We could do a tram at this point. We're not gonna do that yet. We also have ships that we could do. We could do a taxi. We could do postal services. Tours as well look like they are not unlocked yet. And then we also have some of these public transport hubs that are not unlocked either. But today we're gonna to be focused primarily on buses. So let's take a higher view of the city here. So breaking it down as we did, we have commercial throughout here. We have some commercial back here by the highway. And then we have our industry over here. We also have some services, so people do work here. Not necessarily um, have to put bus lines here, but we're gonna try to make it realistic. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna get some bus lines that come through these neighborhoods and maybe this road here, couple roads, pick people up around the neighborhoods and then transport them to the industry area. And then also we'll have some separate routes that transport people into the commercial area. So let's get that going. And what we'll do is we don't have to start by the bus depot. That is just where the buses are stored when they're not doing routes. So let's start one back here on this road. We're gonna try to keep it away from the intersection a little bit. And this one will bring over to the education area and commercial area. So we'll sneak through here, go like that. We're trying to just do right turns and make sure that whoop, I want to put one stop there and make sure we're not crossing intersections too roughly um, and then finish the line. So if we wanted to, we could just do one line just like that. And that gets a couple stops into the commercial, a couple stops in the neighborhood so they can get picked up. Maybe they go to some friends' houses. Not the best route, but it's just a quick example of how to do it. I'm gonna add a few more up through here. Another one that has that shares that stop, maybe shares this stop as well. And then this one's also going to sneak through this neighborhood up a little bit differently. And then we're gonna bring it all the way over to our services, make a stop there, and then wrap around this way, drop them off at the farming industry and make its way back. So that's a couple nice routes and we're gonna keep going and get a few more of these and then we're gonna adjust it a little bit to where we don't have too many buses too early on running. As you can see, they are piling up there. We're gonna kind of mimic this again, which I find this to be a fun way to do it and finish that. And then let's take a look at, since we're in the transportation already, let's jump to this tab here. It shows our three lines. We have eight vehicles on this one line, four here, two here. So we can click on the 
that button, it goes directly to the stop. And at this point we can say we have eight vehicles. We can see they're not really full yet. You could adjust it here and bring this down. One of the reasons you wanna do that is sometimes when you do transportation like this, it causes more traffic issues than it helps. Early on in this, in this city, we're probably not gonna see any problems with that, but you can see we do have people piling up. I'm gonna put it on times three. We're gonna let the buses get spread out because I think we did see, yeah, we have a backup here because we have a couple of routes, but eventually these should spread out. We'll get back, we'll see how that is, and then we'll decide if we wanna adjust it after that. All right, so what I did while the camera was off is I did a little bit of detailing to let the buses, you know, get spread out. Let's put it back in times one as we got a fire spreading. You can see the buses have started to spread. Now they're getting there, not backed up. Got another one coming in. Nope, he's going somewhere else. You see they are spreading out. I think that might have worked out pretty good. Let's go back over to this one where we had a bunch of people. They're getting picked up, so let's go back into the information tab here if we can find it, um, silly boy, there we go. We have 208 people per week using it. You can see the first one that has the most buses only has 41 passengers. So at that point, I am going to scale this one back a little bit. Let's go to, yeah, let's drop it down to six vehicles. Let's go to the other one here that has nine vehicles. We're gonna drop that one down as well to about six, just to make sure we don't have too many too many buses clogging up the roads. That is turning out nice. Let's see what that did to our budget here. If we go back to the regular one, we can see transportation. We are spending almost a thousand a month and we're only making 200. So this is definitely one of those things that is for the people and not for profit. But we have enough things going on in the city, like our industry over here, making a good income of 3,500 a week that allows us to have things like that in the city. And oh, to end the episode, we're gonna have to add some more power. We have plenty of money now. That is still our most expensive power plant that we can use. Can we sneak one in? We can. And let's see what that does to electricity. Good, that'll last us for a while as those people get back up and running. But this one was a little bit longer than I wanted to do. What we're gonna do with the next episode, I am gonna build a little bit off camera, start the episode off by showing you that update and then we'll get into the topic of the video again i hope you're enjoying these videos i'm socks way up hit that like button hit the subscribe button hit some comments or send me some comments give me some feedback let me know what you're thinking about this series what you'd like to see i am doing this a little ahead of schedule so it'll take a while to get caught up on those comments but i will be responding to them as soon as i can again thanks for joining have a great one